Three, two, one. <clears throat> two, one. Three, two, one. That's one. Okay, so just let us know when we're starting. Okay, I'll let you know whenever I'm. Oh, I'm ready. All right, so just, <laughs> just tell me when you're ready. Okay, three, two, one. And a half. Zero. John and I play this fun game. <laughs> and it's my favorite. Do you notice how he just had that painful look, like he was a poodle trying to pass a peach seed when he said that about we play this game, and I love it so much, and he doesn't like it. Okay, so uh, this morning I am uh, privileged to be in the company of, uh, well, illustrious company this morning, so we've got a little panel action going on. Here we are. So, um, and now we can see ourselves up in the corner up there, and there's a delay, so you know. So look. Oh, there's a delay. There is a delay in there, yeah. Delay. So, um, so with me this morning, uh, starting here on my left, I think Kent's been on one other time. Kent Lowry covers the Central United States Force, and then Mr. Martin Hyatt over here on the far left over here, he covers the Western United States for us. And so, Canada. And Canada, excuse and me. And Canada. And Canada, excuse exactly. me. Don't forget the Canucks. My bad. So we uh, we have uh, we have the whole country covered here, and on top of that. We've got a lot of different, uh, there are some differences in the testing, that, so we're going to talk about that a little bit, uh, but mainly this is also first time for Martin to be on here, like I said, Kent's been on one time, but um, so we'll go through very quickly the normal agenda, and then we'll get into what we're, uh, we're going to talk about, which is always, uh, today is going to be actually the last, uh, before our break, we're going to take May and June off, uh, and we're going to go do some more filming and get some more webinar material put together, so we'll be doing that. And then, um, as you know, you've heard it a million times, if you want some sort of a demo or if you want uh, any sort of uh, specific training, very customized training for what you guys do, this is a chance to do it. Just let us know we want to get training on this meter form for this sort of stuff. We use this testing equipment, however you want to do it. And we can line up very specific to you. And you can get everybody on at the same time, do it live. What we're going to do today, we're going to do a quick recap, just talk about some of the things we've been talking about. Um, give us some stories from the road, some Q&A. We've had some questions sent in. Talk a little bit about the future of power metrics, and then do a little wrap-up. So um, as far as a, a quick recap, and that will lead into uh, talking about some differences that we have. Um, I think one of the things, if I just I was just thinking about this just now, and that's usually scary, but um, is the recapping of what we've been doing for some time now. I guess for me, I've changed my actual process that I do on my testing now. So the old dog and new tricks thing doesn't actually work out because this old dog has learned some new tricks. So what I've done now is when I go through my process, my pre-test, I guess, work is a lot more than it used to be. I look at, I take, take a look at the harmonics. I want to take a look at the vectors. I want to take a look at a lot of things pre-test because I can capture them if I see something funky. I can also look at a lot more stuff pre-test. So I would say probably through the course of this last series that we've done, the changes I've seen personally more have been on the pre-testing side. So um, so that's what I do. I, um, I actually do a lot more work on the pre-test, on my hooking up. I hook up a little differently too. I'm on the blades now for my voltages and I coin the surfaces and get on those blades a little bit um, so that instead of on the tabs. And uh, I also do a little difference on my duck bill. So I've, I've changed the way that I actually do my testing, I would say over the last, um, for sure, two years, but especially over this last, uh, this last part that we've done. And so we've gone a lot of different meter forms. We did a, let's see, we did JP, we did a three, a four, a five, a six, and a nine, mm-hmm. right, on this last group, all overhead and underground. Yep. And then even an eight was in there. Yep. And then, uh, so we did all of that, and we found some squirrely stuff on that as we were doing it. But, uh, so we went through all that. So what, the way I wanted to start this was, we were talking about this difference in testing. I know out west, they do a little bit different testing um, out there. And, uh, and one of the things I know that Martin was going to talk to us about this morning was the overall mm-hmm. testing. Okay. Yeah, so um, like John said, if, depending on what te- what uh, part of the country you're in, I see different types of testing. Um, I used to be based in Knoxville, Tennessee. I've done things international as well. Sure. Um, about five years ago, I moved out to the West Coast. And, and it may be just the West Coast thing, but also I think as – as all the loads have changed in the field, I'm seeing a lot more people really want to do customer load testing, mm-hmm. right? It used to be, you know, don't worry about the CTs, don't worry about all the customer load stuff. Mm-hmm. Everyone was just, it was the ANSI meter test, mm-hmm. my full load, power factor, light load, and I'm good to go with that. Yes, sir. Well, with all these new sites now, I mean, I'm going out to sites now and seeing total harmonic distortion on the sites at 30, 40%. 
Mm. And that's finally starting to ring in people's heads that, hey, that ANSI test just really doesn't tell me that much about what's going on on that site, right? Very true. Um, so one of the tests we're seeing um, is to do, do, a, do a test under customer load conditions. So with those harmonics that are out there, with the high bar content, with varying loads, is that meter I have on that site really accurate? right, for that specific site. So that's why we do that customer load meter test. And I'm seeing that take much, much more precedence now mm -hmm. than the ANSI meter test. Because right. ANSI, depending on your PUC or what now, is, isn't a law, it's a suggestion, right? Mm -hmm. So it's also about how much time you can save out there, okay? Obviously you wanna do everything as safe as possible. But if any of you have a three series, if you go to the meter testing, and then customer load, you'll see there's an option for what's called an overall test. And a lot of people don't know what that is. So that's a way to test the meter at the same time you're testing the CTs. So you don't even have to be on the test switch with your duckbill probes when you're testing the meter. I'm gonna test that meter with the primary conductors like a flex core like this around the primaries, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the current I'm gonna read to do that meter test. So the only other thing I have to do is say, my case of H of a 9S meter is now not 1.8, because I'm looking at the primary current instead of the secondary current. Mm -hmm. So I have to take the CT ratio into account for that. So if you have a CT that's a 200 to five, that's mm -hmm. a multiplier of 40. Mm -hmm. So when you do overall tests, it'll say, what's your overall case of H you wanna do now, right? So it's that 1.8 times 40, which in that case equals 72. Uh -huh. And then what I'm doing is I'm doing the meter, I'm still getting the case of H off the meter, off that meter pulse, but I'm looking at primary current. So in that one test, I'm looking at the accuracy of the CTs, if they're wired correctly, if they have a phase difference, hmm. and the accuracy of that meter and the wiring of the test switch all in one, okay? So it's a time saver, so you can get in and out quickly, safely. And if you've got, if you're someone at a huge utility, and you're testing thousands and thousands of meters a year, if you can save five minutes on a site, you can do it. So instead of taking the time to test just the meter by itself, and then just the CTs by itself, now you can do that all encompassing test at one. I've seen a lot of people do that to number one, under customer load, and how can I do it quicker, mm -hmm. right? So those are the things that I'm seeing out on the West Coast. Interesting. Yeah, it's a great little test. I, in fact, when we first came out with it, I wasn't a huge proponent of it because I was always brought up, test the meter by itself, test the CTs by itself, prove those things. But I tell you what, the accuracies are great. It's it's a great test, it really is. Oh, good. Yeah, very cool. And are you seeing harmonics uh, becoming more and more prevalent? Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it's, when I used to do a lot of training out in the field, the number was always, hey, if you're around 20% THD on your current side, you might want to start figuring out what's going on. Well, now I'm going to sites now that, you know, the only thing that might be on is the lights and some computers and their THD is 40, 50%. Yeah. I mean, it's it's almost a half harmonic content on that signal. Yeah. So it's, yeah. And is that meter accurate under those conditions? Yes or no? Well, you don't know. <laughs> You're definitely not going to know it if you bring the meter inside and test it in a test board, right? Because yeah. that's just yeah perfect sinusoidal conditions. So doing that customer load meter yeah. test is where, that's where you're going to find all your lost revenue, without a doubt. That's right. Yeah. And we, uh, I, I know I'm seeing the same thing. And it just, big uh, hotels, big anything, tons of lights and computers in there. And that's all it takes. And I'm mm -hmm. seeing these numbers are getting, yeah. Before, like you said, it was, uh, voltage was 8%, current was 20. But now, that 20 gets blown out of the water a lot. Oh, easily. A lot. And I think, too, uh, not to blame COVID for a lot of things, but I, I think in this situation, you probably could because some businesses have literally shut down. Oh yeah. They're gone. And uh, that's that's a, a factor that plays into everything as well. Absolutely. So, Yeah, we're starting to see a similar situation like you do with a, a capacitor bank. They put in the big capacitor bank, then they don't turn anything on. They're going, yeah. how can I have a capacitive load here? Let's get this. <laughs> now that's taken over. And now we're seeing you bring in all these lights, all these computers bring all this stuff on, and that's all that's really running. It's going to induce a lot of it on the system. And, and if it's, it. listen, if it's just a building that has LED lights, right, that's still power, but it's not a huge amount of power that has that harmonic content. All the, all the electric car chargers, the amount of power those things are drawing, the harmonic content on those is off the charts. Yeah. So 
utilities are really going to start taking that into account when they size their transformers yeah. and everything like that because they're going to they're yeah. start melting. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, that's a, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a great and point. Yeah, that's a great point. And if you capture it with the equipment and show it to them, that way they can have a conversation with the customer and say, look, we could have something bad coming down the road. Mm -hmm. And then that way, if something unfortunately does happen bad down the road, they, the, the customer just will look at you and go, hey, replace all my stuff. No, wait a minute. Time out. Well, we had to talk. Well, yeah, if you think about it, like um, everyone has their little phone charger. What is that? And why does it cause harmonics? Well, it transfers AC to DC, right? Yeah. What's a car charger? Same thing. A to, AC to DC, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So take much like, larger take 10,000 of yes. those and plug them in, and that's what your car charger is going to do. That's right. Yeah. And, and when they start going in people's houses, I mean, think of what that's going to do to the grid. Yeah. It's going to affect so, it big time. So harmonics I, is going to get... Harmonics is going to just... We always thought it was a big deal, and it's it's going to start going off. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's yeah. going to keep getting a big deal. Yeah, we need to start looking at filters, making some filters oh, yeah. for harmonics. Mm -hmm. yeah. And all your power masters will measure your harmonics. There you go. Isn't that something? Yeah, isn't that Woo! something? Well, we were thinking really out of the box there, weren't we? That's right. Yeah. Nice yeah. lead. Yeah. And you can... And the great thing is, is pre-test, you can record all that and capture it. Absolutely. You can hit stop and save and stop and save and show either the bar graph harmonics or you can show THD down at the bottom on the RMS table screen. But yeah, because if it stays that high for a long time, something's going to get yeah. eventually. Yeah. yeah. And you can pick out, you know, see, like you said, the bar graph. All right, which harmonic is really causing the issues here? Is it the seventh? Is it the ninth? What is it? Right. So, yeah, it's cool to see the real distorted waveform. It's a cool little picture, but... Digging into that true data that we show you, you can say, exactly. oh, I've got huge seventh harmonic or ninth harmonic on this yeah. site. What are we going to do to alleviate that? Yeah, that's true. Good point. So here we go. Uh, some questions that came in. Is the wireless remote link, the Powermetrics new uh, the remote manager, PRM, available for the 7 Series? This came in from Nick Bollinger. I hope I said the name correctly. I think not Bollinger. Well, yes. It will be. Uh, currently, it is not, but uh, we've kind of started as the three series as our uh, one test um, item, if you will. We mm -hmm. started it with the three series sure. first, but uh, uh, hopefully in the future, we will be able to um, have this wireless capability for everything uh, going forward, the four and the seven as well. Um, yes, we will be. Not quite available yet, but it's coming. Right. I think they started, I think the strategy was to start with the, the three series yes. and then the 6618. 18. Right. And then um, after that, um, moving to fours and sevens or whatever else. Yeah. I think was the strategy. I know I've seen them do some testing with the seven, so it's it's in the works. It's coming. It's in the works. works. Yeah. yeah. I think the biggest one is going to be for um, the four series. Yes. Just because the four series is a great meter tester, but the screen's the smallest one that we have, right? Yeah. So the ability to have a nice big tablet there and throw your meter in and just sit there and that's right. Bang your eyes don't oh, absolutely. Yeah, because I'm getting older, my eyes aren't even that good. <laughs> yeah. So having a having a nice True. tablet, yes. is, yeah, True. is nice. And then if you if you got the tablet, you actually don't have to be sitting right there at it. Exactly. I can be that's over here correct. kind of doing something else right. while I'm running a test over yeah. here. Exactly. Yeah, because otherwise, if you're in an actual Test bench, you gotta be right there hitting yeah. the buttons. And I have lots of customers use a four series in the lab. Yeah. So at that point, then it really is. It's almost like a test board. Yeah, that's have what your, I was you saying. Have your four yeah. series stack, you put it in, and you're yeah. on your computer. Yeah. And you're just mousing it. Yeah. Saying start, test, stop, test, save the that's results. Right. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. As a, as a bench, as a real true yeah. test board, you can just set something in there and go out and be doing something else. So that that'd be running it. With I mean, you can do your. I know we we down talked the full load power factor light load, but everyone still does it. Sure. I mean, you can use, right. think of your four series. You're getting a unit for fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000, yeah. and then you add PRM to it. It's basically a test board. Yeah. You know, Portable it's test board. A third of the cost of what a normal test board yeah. would be. Yes. And you can sit there and run it from over here while you're exactly. multitasking. Exactly. Right. Yeah, it's a great value. Because they're going to do that on the on the resi meters. They're yep, gonna do that absolutely. Anyway. They're going to do it anyway. So yep. you may as well, yeah. And, yep. and this will allow you to walk away and do other stuff while you're hitting it. Right, yeah. Now that restrictions are lifting, are you guys offering on-site training again? Elliot Peterson. That's a cool name. It is a very cool name. That is a very cool name. If I were going to actually have, like if I was going to like go into theater or something, that would be my stage name right there. 
Well, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I think it is. It's pretty cool. Sounds like a newscaster or something. Elliot Peterson. It does no. sound like it. it's a good news name. Right? NBC, Elliot yeah. Peterson. Actually, we've never really stopped uh, offering on-site training, uh, even during our, quote, restrictions. Uh, guys were busy um, a lot, still still doing uh, meter testing, and we got uh, picked up a lot more... Um, you know, training, actually not so much training, but testing now, um, it's, they're very busy. In the beginning, we had to issue the guys cattle prods to keep people, make sure they kept yeah, their distance. Right. Yeah, right. But as long as they kept but their if they were foot, there, <laughs> as, as long as they were out there by themselves, it was fine. Yeah, they're it was good. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, so we, yeah, exactly what we can't say. We're doing uh, the training, the uh, on-site, the training that we do. We can use this, the bench right behind us. And um, so we can use that and go out and do training. We still do it for the uh, the municipals and states. Usually have a body that uh, that does training for them. The um, co-ops have someone that'll set up some sort of statewide co-op training, statewide municipal training. And we've started tapping into those folks like TVPPA, um, the uh, Oklahoma um, Association of Electrical uh, Co-ops, uh, people like that that have tapped into us and asked us um, IMPA. And, and whoever the either municipal or co-op governing bodies for the state, they do set up yearly training for them once or twice. And they are, we're starting to get into that with these. And they've asked us to come and do training. So we definitely do the on-site training now is definitely still going. And if you want us to come in and do a week with you, we could do that as well. Yes. Yeah, we've got a couple set up in Oklahoma, yep. um, one in July and one in November. Yep. So we can go in and there and spend a week with you and train there. Um, or you can come in here for a week and train if you like to come in here. So all of the training is definitely still running. Still running. Do you still offer on-site meter testing services, Jacob White? Um, I guess, yes. I kind of answered that earlier, I guess. But Yeah, and I would say where it says on-site meter testing services, we'll, we test the entire you know, installation so we can test CTs, PTs, um, all of the wiring and the meters, and then we'll test everything, do inspections. Uh, we'll take pictures to look if there's a leak and transformer on there. We do site inspections. We take all the pictures. We do all the things we're supposed to do, uh, the due diligence, and report all that to the utility. If there's something out, um, we also do analytics and all of the test information and the test data and say, here's what we've seen, this site, this site, this site, and this site you might want to check out because of la, 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 la. So we'll do the analytics on them. We'll um, we do the testing uh, for them on all the stuff, CTs, PTs, and the meters. We're doing installs as well, still, right? Yeah. Are we doing we, installs? Yeah, we do meter swap outs and everything. Yeah, we do meter stalls and uh, swaps, all that stuff. Now it started getting as it's growing. The t the testing seems to be growing more. Yeah, yeah. And the change outs, and uh, because you know, we I guess the way that we look at it too is personnel. You know, we only have so many personnel. So right now, the testing has really started growing big time. But yeah, we do. Yeah. All right, whoever reads this has to take a shot at the name. And I've already read a couple. So, I've already, so it's between y'all two. You want to go for it? You want to flip for it? Yeah, I was just going to say, who's got something to flip? You got something I've, to flip? I've been here 17 years, so I have seniority, so you're reading it. Oh, wow. Okay, that so, happens so quickly. Guys. I'm like an OG. The rookie that is, you are the OG. OG. You are the OG. Okay, so that's true. How do I identify various ways of energy meter malfunctioning and theft? Which of your equipment can be used to certify low voltage and high voltage energy meter? Affinity Chowakaki. And that is probably the wrong it's a valiant effort. name. Valiant that effort. was. I think that's his. This person must have an American Indian relative named Affinity Chowakaki, whatever you said was said, or more yes. American Indian. Yes. I'm going to go with. I'm going to cheat a little because I heard Jared say, didn't you say Ifiani? Is that how you said Ifiani? it? Ifiani? Ifiani? Yeah. Now, the Ch I, didn't, I didn't hear the. I know you said Ifiani. I would go with Chiquique. Chiquique? Chiquique. Okay. I would go, yes. I would go Efeni. Efeni? Or like JP or something. I'd be, this person would be known as IC to me. 
I see. I see. Yeah. <laughs> what up, I see? How's it going, buddy? I just know it's a bad of the bone, cool name. Yeah. And if he on, yeah, that would be, yeah, there you go. Is it if he on E or if he on ye? That's the, whether you pronounce the Y or not. Yeah. But it's a bad. It's a soft name. Y. It's, a it's bad better than Elliot Peters. That's right. <laughs> it's, yeah. That's a bad of the bone name right there. I don't know. I would say they might not be Irish. No, don't think so. Yeah. I'm going to go. So all of our equipment can certify meters, right? Whether it's a medium voltage meter or a substation meter, um, they all have metering levels of signals that we're going to measure it like a test switch. Well, yeah. Um, if, the, if the question here is um, how do I identify various ways of energy meter manufacturing that? So in other words, can I test the meters? And then he's just wanting to know, can it be used to certify low voltage and high, high voltage meters? Yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah. A meter's a meter. Yeah. yeah, meter's a meter to us. It's when you get into the other stuff, I'm gonna stick with Ifiani. If we, if we go with the other stuff, <laughs> Ifiani, what, what it is is, it's, it's the CTs or whatever it is that you're pulling off of that dictates our probes and what we can use to measure it by. Yeah. But as far as the other, the meter itself, that's pretty simple. You know, you're gonna go with the test switch and deal with what you deal with, but when you wanna do a CT test, that's when it'll, because of the size of the CTs, but just looking at those right there, with a high volt probe, we hit all of those easily because we can get up to, uh, you know, 400, Katie. So I, it looks to me like just the numbers you have right there, that we should be fine yeah. um, on any of those. And, and it's really the limitations for us wouldn't be on the meter side, it would be on what we, as far as the CT side on that, and what we can get to with the CTs. But as far as, you know, catching a meter malfunction, I mean, like we're talking, See, if, can you do a custom load meter test? Yeah. Very important. Um, if someone has tampered with a CT, can you actually get on the primary and the secondary of the CT? That's right. To make sure that CT hasn't been tampered with. Right. So if you've got a high voltage one, we'll use our sensor link HV probe that goes up on the primary. I've got the secondary of the test switch or the clamp somewhere else. And you can make sure, hey, that those signals speeding that meter are in fact correct and no one's tampered with that. Because they don't have to just tamper with the meter. They can tamper with anything within that system. That's right. Yeah. Let me get a little bit. Yeah. You know, it, it gets down to Martin's exactly right, and it? It, it gets down to that there's even more than one way to determine if things are okay or not. I mean, when we've been out there, one, another thing that I've gotten to where I've had to do more of over the past couple of years is no load situations. And if you show up and there's no load there, yeah. you can do the math and, and, and know if you're close. I mean, you can just, as long as I can look at the primary and secondary and look at it in my multiplier and see if those two come out okay. So there's other ways of doing it, but of the numbers that uh, Ifiani just put up there, we should be fine. I mean, like I said, when you get up into some really high voltage stuff, then we're going to be limited as far as uh, the probe that we have for the, for the CTs. But the meter itself, since everything's been, you know, stepped down, we're fine down at the meter. We can test any meter, no problem at all. And like I said, we can get up 430 now face to face. Yeah, I mean, that was a very specific question. So I would say if you have more questions about that, shoot us an email. And give yes. us some more details on that. Seemed very specific. On yes, it. and the and the numbers that we did see, yeah. we would be fine. so. Why don't you shoot us an email? And we'll um we'll talk about that more further in detail with you offline. Yep. Cool. So on the webinars, you say that the flex cables are most accurate when they're dead center. Have you guys changed your calibration process, or is that still true, Leonard Lesko? So evidently, Leonard has been speaking with someone here as far as maybe one of our customer service, our calibration folks, or anybody in that string, that, that line of communication, the company, <coughs> because actually there has been a change. Mm -hmm. And we will let Mr. Hyde go over that since he has a flex right in front of us. So let's talk a little bit about flex probe theory, or any of our probes for that matter. Um, and the connection point here that actually goes to the probe adapter cable, that's where we have our communication chip in there. So in that chip is, you know, what type of probe is this? What's its serial number? And also, what are its calibration values? So we calibrate these in-house, as everyone knows, so you get the best field accuracy as possible. Off the shelf, any of these Rogowski coils are probably about a 1% probe, mm -hmm. okay? Um, we can't change the physical nature of this probe, but we can try to kind of zero it out. Mm -hmm. So that's why we calibrate them in-house. Now. If you know anything about Rogowski coils, there is no, there's no metal on metal connection here, right? So you can actually have this around your conductors like that and still actually get a reading, right? So the question is, how do we get the best readings in the field? Well, when we do a calibration on them, 
we can calibrate them with that conductor anywhere in that loop, right? As you move that conductor in that loop, you're gonna get different readings on that primary current. So most people have told us that most of the time when they're out in the field, they're hanging their probe on a conductor. So now what we've done is when we calibrate these in house, that's kind of our sweet spot up near the top of that window, as far away from that conductor as possible, that connector as possible, excuse me. So that's really kind of your sweet spot, right? Kind of up around in here now. It's not necessarily in the center anymore, okay? Now also you wanna be perpendicular with your conductor. So if you look at that, that's kind of your best case scenario. As I move it like that, you will see a difference in that primary current reading, right? As you move it in the window, the angle, everything like that is gonna affect that reading. Sorry to interrupt, but, yep. but, but it goes directly to what we always talk about with the high volt probes. When you're putting them up on the right. line, right. you wanna put them just, Martin's making a big point here, which is you wanna be perpendicular with that high volt probe as well. Those are the ones you'll get up there and start cocking it around, moving around just to get it around stuff. Mm -hmm. But the best, best case practices are what Martin's saying right here, which is you want to be perpendicular to the conductor mm -hmm. when you're using that high volt probe. Yeah. And this really, I mean, this is the best technology there is out there right now that covers the most, the widest range of installations, all right? right. Rogowski coils are not perfect. The CTs, most metering class CTs are still 0.3% fully loaded. People are putting in the extended range and the high accuracy CTs now, which are down to 0.1, 0.15%. So when you do that measurement, this probe right here is your weak link in that measurement. So you really, this is an art form on how you connect these out in the field, right? Mm -hmm. um, some of the other things to know, that connection point, even though it's not metal on metal, if you have that sitting on a conductor, you're going to get worse readings, okay? Right. So a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll start double wrapping. They want to make this window smaller because anything that finds its way into this window, whatever kind of magnetic field is going to get measured, right? Mm -hmm. So as we double wrap that, we now make that window smaller so there's less chance of that happening. But if you do double wrap it so much that your conductor is right on top of that, you've right. almost done right. you've yourself almost a disservice. Done. Exactly. Yeah. So it's really an art form how you connect these things. The other big thing to know when you're using a Rogowski coil is on the outside, right? If that touches a voltage carrying conductor, you'll get a worse reading. So it's, where is it in the window? We want to be up here now, right? We want to make sure it's perpendicular, like John said. We want to stay as far away from that as possible. Mm -hmm. right. We want to make sure there's not another conductor that's banging into this. Right. Now, obviously, you can't make all those happen every single time, depending on what site you're on. You just have to be the best you can. That's right. right. So, if someone could create a Rogowski coil that was, mm -hmm. you know, 0.1% accurate, boy, that'd be, that'd be great. But the technology's just not there. So, it's really an art form, like I said, on how you connect these things up in the field. And that's sure. where you're gonna get your best readings. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. Now, if you give us a call and say, hey John or hi Kent, my sites, I'm not hanging them like that most of the time. I have the ability, most of mine are in the middle. We can calibrate them wherever you want. Yeah. We just need to know what you want. That's right. Okay, so we're not stuck in doing things just one. Sure, so general practices now, though, we're going up. General yeah. practice, well, if you buy a Power Master from us and you get a flex score, we've calibrated it right about there. Okay, right out of the box. Okay. Yep. And I would say, too, one thing we noticed earlier, and we talk about it all the time, notice where they've got it wrapped on this one. You would want it wrapped over here. So having the tape over there really doesn't help you much. Mm -hmm. You want to have it over here, give yourself that strain relief, because when you mess this up where that black goes into that mold right there, that molded piece of plastic, mm -hmm. that's using one they can't repair. So then you gotta buy another one and then everybody's ticked off. Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Oh, we did for, we wanted, wanted to mention that um, we're actually improving our flex core CTs now. Yep. So um, they're all gonna be CE marked. So they have that extra layer of protection in them. They've been potted in the box. So less susceptible to external magnetic fields and things like that. So we have improved them like that, which, which is a good thing for, for field use. Oh, absolutely. Anything you can help with the fields and stuff. Yep. Yeah, because we were always fighting that. And by the way, they still will work with these. 
Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. If customers want to go back and watch any of these programs on the archive slash website, they can still do that, write any special login instructions. Alan Wayne, trust me, folks. Let's see. I think they could go back and watch them if JP wants them to see them. No, I only work on Tuesdays. That's what I thought. <laughs> no. Okay, that's what I figured. I figured you were a Tuesday guy. I knew that was coming. <laughs> well, he's got everybody pulling him. He's Stretch Armstrong. Everybody's pulling him in different directions. Yeah. So, um, yes, you can see them on. I didn't even know all these. What is this? Uh, oh, that's all the Power Metrics ones. There's also yes. YouTube, right? Um, they are on YouTube, but I discourage YouTube. I have reasons. Oh. Marketing reasons. Oh. Um, okay. It's related videos. If you go on YouTube and you watch something, you'll have a line of related videos off to the side. And those may or may not be produced by Power Metrics. Oh, I got you. Okay. You can find them on YouTube. Do what you want to do. These are the originals. These are the originals. These are the originals. The, the originals. slash webinar series is the entire webinar series. It's the whole library. It's, it's the entire library. Uh, training videos are videos that were produced before I came along. They're good, but they're just a little bit dated. And then PMX Meter School, John, you'll remember we did, I think it was a two-week series where it was just nuts and bolts and facts. Yeah. And if you really want to get down and dirty and learn something quickly, you go to PMX Meter School. Gotcha. Every webinar that we've done since this started is available on at least one of these three pages. So the one that slash webinar series, that's the one where it was just this before we went out in the field as well? Or is it both? In it's the both. field and this? It's okay. both. Yeah. Okay. And when we when we take our summer break, I'm gonna do I'm gonna build a couple of more pages. Um, I'm sure you guys have noticed that every site was broken up into three presentations. Mm -hmm. Yes. I am going to I'm sorry John, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna cut you out. Okay. And I'm going to put up just the in the field. So all of this in the bunker stuff won't be there. It'll okay. just be the field training. Sure. I don't have that page built yet. I'm working on it. There will be a newsletter go out when it's done. Gotcha. So, yeah, so the answer is definitely yes. Yes. Um, that you can go on our website. You can see all the stuff. And it even has, when we were doing them, we started out doing them just on this. We started out doing it with just a test stick. Because the bench wasn't That's right. released mm -hmm. yet. Oh my! Yeah. yeah, one of the first ones we actually introduced the stance. Yep. Oh my! We're going wow. way back. I remember distinctly. There was one time when we had a test stand set up right about here, and you said, "Good, my camera was here, and the bench was behind you." And I zoomed out, and Chris Mullins' eyes got as big as saucers. <laughs> And after the end of it, he says, you guys showed the bench. Oh, that's right. And John says, nah, we're going to show it to him next week anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I forgot. It really did start out. And then I remember just saying, we better do two a week, you know, because mm, this yeah. COVID thing will last a couple months. Yeah. And so we're going to do two weeks to flatten the curve. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So we'll do it two weeks. And then after a little while, we're going, man, what else are we going to do? We're running out of material. And that was so fun. If there's anyone on the webinar right now that's from the West Coast, uh -huh. um, obviously it's a three-hour time change. So oh. a lot of times they can't be on these all the time. Right. Um, I've actually got a setup kind of like this in my home lab. I've got three or four cameras up, yep. and I can go from a 6 Series to nice. the software and stuff like that. So I've done probably 10 or 15 individual training sessions for oh, guys nice. out on the West Coast and in Canada. Um, nice. So if any of you are on the West Coast or in Canada and you want something like that, um, make sure to shoot me an email because I have the ability to do that on maybe a different time frame than what Knoxville set up nice. right here as well. Nice. Yeah. And we'd like to uh, thank everyone too for yeah. at our meter schools that come up to us and thank us for the webinars and uh, yes. the training. Uh, that means a lot and we, uh, we appreciate that. And I do pass that along to JP and to, uh, to Chris as well. Yep, for sure. Got a couple of questions in the chat. Patrick wants to know if we have considered marking the sweet spot on the coil. The sweet spot on the coil. Hmm. No, I guess, I mean, we do that. I don't know. I guess what would, what would make sense would be like a sticker on it that says 
calibrated on the edge mm. or something like that or calibrated in the center or something like that. There's no way to really put a mark kind of in here somewhere. Yeah, that's what <laughs> um, I was thinking. There's no way to put a mark but there. But we can look into that. Just as a reminder that when you're hooking it up, oh, that's right, my sweet spot is on the edge. Yeah, and you know, you wouldn't even have, you could just have a colored piece of something right there. Just, it wouldn't have to even have writing or anything. Just something that's, like that's this. Just, just a little colored piece of something up there. Yeah. yeah, okay. I mean, you could even tape it if you wanted to, right? Maybe some green tape. I think there's ways to, a lot of it's just having meetings like this and getting the word out. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. once true. you know it, you kind of know it. True. Um, we could do that, though. Well, yeah, if, if you've, you've ever looked something. these up online with different manufacturers, what they'll see is they'll have a picture of this and they'll have like a circle drawn in here and says this is uh, kind of your sweet spot. And down here, you're going to get, you know, you can get up to 2% more error. And over mm. here, you can get, you know, an extra 0.5% error. So that's mm -hmm. kind of how they do it. Mm -hmm. um, but for us, it'd be, I think it'd be a good idea if we could get with uh, manufacturing and some sort of something on it says, hey, calibration sweet spot on the edge or something like that. Hang this side up. Something like, like that. that. Just good. hang this side up right there. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, at some point, it could end up looking like a NASCAR. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it away from here. Keep put it, it up here. It up there. Brought that's to you by. Brought to you by. That. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> one more. What are the ratings of coils available? Well, these are rated at 600 volts. Um, we have another one that's actually a 48 inch. So you can get the 48 inch that's also up to 600 volts. Um, both of those are good up to 3,000 amps. Um, we have a 48 inch probe that's still good to 600 volts, but goes up to 30,000 amps. Mm -hmm. um, and then your anything higher voltage has to be with the sensor link high voltage probe. Mm -hmm. But as far as these, these are all 600 volt conductor. Yep. Um, either 3,000 amp is the normal one you get, um, but we do have the ability to get ones to go up to 30,000 amps, and that's a 48-inch version. Is there a 24-inch still? You can also get a 24-inch. So, so you can get a smaller one, you get a 24, yep. you can get the standard 36, or you can get a 48. Yep. And in the 48, you can also even get a higher voltage rate. Higher current rate. I'm oh, sorry, Not higher current rate. Just, but the voltages are all 600 volt, and then they're all 3,000 amp, but then you can get a higher one on the on one, one model of the 48-inch, you can get it to 30,000. That's correct. That's correct. Right. I actually sent um, a 24 inch version to a customer a little while ago. Um, so if you think about that being 36, your window is now like that. Mm. So if that'll fit around most of your conductors and your pads and whatnot, now you really don't have the need to double wrap anymore. Mm. That window's already smaller. That's true. right. So they actually really like it. I'll be. Yeah. So it makes, like I said, you don't necessarily have to double wrap. Nice. If you get really low current anymore, because yeah. with the extended range CTs, I mean those things are accurate down to one percent of their full rated load. So, if the C, if you get a two hundred to five CT that's rated down good at two amps on its primary, make this as good as you can reading that. Oh yeah, 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 it's, yeah. it's rough at that point. It's hey, yeah. I, I just need more load than that. I want to double that. Right. Right. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to pump so, it up there. Exactly. This thing works better. Gotcha. Cool. A lot of questions. All right. So we're out of questions. Um, I would just like, like to say, glad the guys were here. Um, they're in for some meetings this week, and uh, Marty's got a customer that's come in for some demos, so that's why we're all piled up in here this week. Glad to have them in. Uh, if you got any questions, holler at them. Um, I'm sure you got their contact info. Um, you might want to say it just real quick while you got a chance. You're out here at International. Go ahead and throw your numbers out real quick. Uh, Midwest, 865-973-7110 um, is... Midwest, Cat Lowry. And my number is 865-466-5338. And I'm on Pacific Time. So Pacific Central time, time here. Eastern Time over here. Well, <laughs> at least that's where I start out. So I'm here at Eastern Time. So mine's 865-414-7571. Um, so if you got any questions, please holler at us. Um, and if you'd like to get any kind of demos or training or any of that, uh, we definitely are going to do it. We'll be now, this will be our last one until uh, July, and then we'll start back in again. I remembered something. Um, the first Tuesday in July mm -hmm. is July the 5th. Mm -hmm. So maybe we don't do one on July the 5th. Maybe we go July the 12th. Uh, we'll be in OK City. We'll All figure right. it out.
We'll yeah. figure it out. We'll we'll uh, we'll pre. Maybe we'll record one. We'll record one because there I'll, you go. I'll be doing that. Got gotcha. City View. Yep. Cool. Yeah. All right, folks. Well, we sure appreciate it. Uh, glad the guys were here. If you got any questions, holler at us. Um, if you would like to see any of the uh, the old uh, webinars that we've done before. Um, in between this May June break that we're taking, please uh, just go to our website at biometrics.com. There they are right there. The webinar, the one slash webinar series has got all of them on there, both the ones just with the bench and the ones that are actually out there in the field as well. So um, before I leave though, I do not want to forget, I always say a prayer before I leave. So, um, and I can't believe that JP was going to let me get off there. You told me to stop reminding you. No, I didn't. Yeah. Did so. Oh, man. No, don't ever stop reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, I'm going to pray this out. And then uh, we sure appreciate everybody. Appreciate all your support. If there's anything we can do to help y'all, as you can see, this train is very important to us. Um, if we can do anything to keep anybody out of harm's way, uh, we're all on it. So, um, so you please let us know. About Robert Pillsbury and his family. That'd be great. Yes, I will bring up Robert. I will also bring up Larry. So um, I was going to talk about that. that. Yes, sir. All right. Precious Heavenly Father, it, uh, it's a crazy world that we live in. And um, it's because it's full of crazy people like me. So it's uh, just dealing with folks and uh, in the midst of all this. And, um, and through the course of that, we, uh, we make friends, uh, we have colleagues, and we have folks that, uh, that we get to know and uh, in the midst of our work, and then they become more than just uh, people that we know from work, and they become our friends and our colleagues. And we have two folks we want to lift up today, uh, Robert Pillsbury and Larry Dalby. Um, they both uh, put up valiant fights, and uh, both of them fought the same thing, and they fought it and uh, were real warriors in the midst of all of it, and had such awesome attitudes, and talked about you all the time, and praying, and just, Father, I just want to lift them up uh, right now. I know their families are missing them terribly, and uh, that's the tough, one of the tough things about this whole Christian walk is you're just selfish because you don't want them to leave, but then uh, you know that uh, that they're going to be in a better place, but you sure miss them uh, while they're not here with you. So, um, so Father, we're, uh, we've got some families that are going to be missing, um, Larry and Robert, and so uh, we want to lift them up to you, and uh, Father, I just want to lift everybody up in our uh, in our business. What we do, there's so many folks that do the work in our business that are uh, that have a sacrificial mindset. They go out and put themselves in harm's way, or support the people putting themselves in harm's way by being on the road for most of their lives, or doing whatever else they do. But all of this is just so folks can have the uh, the privilege that they don't even appreciate of being able to turn on the heat and the air and the lights and everything else they depend on. So um, I lift up all the folks in our industry and what they do to provide that those basic functions to everybody in this country. And Father, I know right now too, um, I like to lift this country up because it just seems like things are getting crazier every day and it just makes you shake your head or turn your head wondering what in the world's going on. But Father, uh, we know that you are in control of everything and that you are the uh, the one true God. So Father, just please don't take your hands off of us. Keep, keep us in your hands like you say you will. And uh, Father, hopefully we'll turn more to you in the midst of all this chaos. So, uh, all of these things, I now ask and say, according to the one who paid the most precious price of all, his life for me, I'm just a sorry, sorry sinner. That's my brother, Jesus Christ. So all of these things I ask and say, according to the will of him, my brother, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Cool. Bum, bum, bum. We good? All the way through May and June? Mm -hmm. I'll say one last thing. I mean, we're taking a big break now. You, get, you and Jarrett have been doing this for how long now? Two years? Yeah. Oh, so, my God. So everyone out there, I don't think you realize maybe the amount of effort that these guys have put into this over <laughs> the last two years. I don't see it firsthand because I'm out in Spokane. Yeah, Ken very true. not see it. He's in Illinois. So yeah. a little round of applause. Yeah, for yeah I'm sure. Take a little break. Everyone out there. Nice job, guys. I know uh, I appreciate it immensely what you yes. guys have been doing for us. Oh, yes, cool, sir. Man. Thanks. For I sure. know they are out there as well. So thanks to both of you guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thumbs up. There's a thumbs up from JP there. <laughs> well, I tell you, it's weird that when we were doing these things, you wonder, you know, you wonder, is anybody really, you know, <laughs> what's going on and all that. And then, like I said, the la right there, the last couple of years there is what got me the most was people coming up and saying, yeah, you know, we actually, because we're at a municipal or, or we're at a co-op, we're doing all these different things. When we go out right before we're ready to do a test at a 
four S meter. We run, we sit on our laptop in the truck and watch it real quick. Yeah. Or we watch yeah. a three S just to make sure we don't get ourselves in trouble. And, and that, that meant everything to me. So I made sure I yeah. came back and told these guys because uh, JP and Chris, uh, they're the ones that got it started. And then JP's the one that's drug me along, kicking and screaming through this whole thing because <laughs> he does all the work, really. I- <laughs> but um, anyway, so uh, so thanks. Yeah, it doesn't just happen. No. Nope, no, it does not. We're good? Hey, we're good. All right. Everybody be safe out there. Be safe out there. God bless y'all. Be thanks careful. for your time. Yep, yeah, appreciate, appreciate y'all. it. See you in June. See you in July. June. July, July. <laughs> you already cut it down.